Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today, wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. And once again, this is the one-day chart. We're sitting here just above 54 and a half cents. We must be dipping in price because Ripple's dumping on the community again. Actually, what's happening is we are following Bitcoin almost down to 57K. And people are still expecting us to go much deeper. I still see people calling for sub 40 cents for XRP. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. Honestly, I think the month of September is going to turn around and be good for crypto. But we got to wait and see. Now, everybody always says, you know, they're never going to replace this and they're never going to replace that. So let's take a look at what SWIFT did. Telex declined. Telex networks were in widespread use from the 1930s to the 1990s, but began to decline after that. They were eventually superseded by faxes and computerized electronic communication networks. Telex and SWIFT. Before the establishment of SWIFT, Telex was the primary method for international interbank telecommunication. SWIFT was founded in 1973 by 239 banks from 15 countries as a response to concerns about the concentration of global financial flows in a single entity. And eventually, we're going to watch SWIFT be replaced by XRP and RippleNet because, you know, technology doesn't stop. It continues to advance. And when there's a better option out there, people want to use the better option. The banks can capitalize on this. Early banks can get the upper hand even on the biggest banks that are out there because technology is an absolute game changer. And that's what RippleNet and XRP is. It's a major disruptor for the banks and an absolute game changer. Then people said just like a couple, like maybe a year, year and a half or so when I started talking about the Chinese yuan and how it's going to eventually come for the U.S. dollar. And people said nobody's going to use it. Well, Chinese yuan beat euro to become the second most used currency. You see how fast things change? And it's going to continue to change. We're already on the path. And you know, everybody says, well, BRICS is never going to utilize XRP or RippleNet. You don't know that. There's a hell of a lot of rails already put in place by Ripple in every single BRICS country. The logical path forward for the BRICS is to use RippleNet and XRP because XRP not only brings on-demand liquidity, but it also works as a trust layer in between two countries. Ripple, as usual, released a billion XRP from the escrow around 14 hours ago. They just locked back all of it. This has been a reoccurring theme for the past few months. Makes you wonder who they're saving it for. So usually Ripple only brings back or locks back in 800 million. But people are saying this time they locked back the entire billion XRP. And you know, it's just a matter of time until every single one of these funds will want to have your XRP. As you're selling Vanguard, Fidelity, BlackRock, these are the companies that are going to be buying up your XRP. But they're going to be buying it up and locking it away for long periods of time, using it for its actual utility. That's why I'm always urging you not to sell too soon. But I think that escrow is eventually going to end up, end up in the hands of the IMF, the BIS, and the central banks. Now, this is not coming from Molly Elmore. This looks like a fake account. 
Ripple could be forced to burn 50 billion XRP in escrow. This would catapult the price to $10,000 immediately. It doesn't even sound like something Molly Elmore would say. But the, you see this every single day all over X. And that's not even what would happen if they were to burn the 50 billion in escrow. We've seen it happen with XLM. Burn the escrow. This is not XLM bashing. Just a matter of clearing up a few narratives. Think about it. Stellar has burned 50% of the supply and still holds 50% of the supply. Without escrow and has performed worse than XRP without SEC action. I remember when that burn took place and the price pumped up a little bit and people were getting excited about it only to watch it come right back down. Same thing would happen with XRP. You would get a small pump and then we'd be right back where we are right now. People always think that the burning of the escrow is going to change things like an overnight event. SEC warns FTX against paying creditors back in stablecoins and other crypto. So it looks like the SEC is telling FTX to pay the creditors back with cash. They want them to get cash instead of crypto or stablecoins. But what about the Ripple's new stablecoin, RLUSD? It's pegged to a one US dollar. I don't see any reason why FTX cannot pay back creditors using RLUSD or even USDC. But I said it earlier today, if the FTX was to pay back all these people that lost their crypto in cash, most of that money is never coming back to the crypto space. Because once people get cash, you know, people have a lot of debt, credit card debt. It hits a new all-time high every single day. On top of that, people are fighting off inflation. So if they were to get cash, most likely they would not hold it. They would just pay off their bills or continue to fight off inflation. But let's see where this goes from here. Must watch Ripple launching multi-purpose tokens on the XRP ledger in quarter three of 2024. This comes from Good Morning Crypto. Take a listen. Uh, potential advancements in XRP ledger technology to better support uh, real world assets. So uh, one example is, you know, a, a token type made specifically for RWA uh, called multi-purpose tokens. Um, that allows for storage of metadata uh, directly with, with the asset. Um, there's a few other advantages in terms of scalability, flexibility uh, as well, but we're really trying to um, increase the, the, the suitability for the XRP ledger for this, for this use case um, to, to really lower the barrier to entry for, for these institutions. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to make it easier for institutions to onboard with real world asset tokenization. So you see the key capabilities of a multi-purpose token on the XRP ledger, access on-chain real-time data, flexibility to adapt as needed automatically, freezing clawbacks and non-transferable tokens, key use cases coming to XRP, treasury bonds, airline credits, or and collectibles, university certificates are you bullish on tokenized assets coming to the xrp ledger i'm absolutely bullish on this honestly i cannot wait until archax starts onboarding that trillions and trillions of dollars worth of tokenized assets i think that's going to change the price of xrp very fast xrp will be moving that value daily Think about that. All of a sudden, say somebody tokenizes art and they want to transfer that art to a buyer. They could use XRP in between and move that asset digitally before they even move it physically. Tokenization is going to open up a lot of different doors. And I like the idea that the XRP ledger is making it easier for them to onboard. 
U.S. poll reveals cryptocurrency ownership varies across demographic groups. The poll conducted earlier this month with responses from over 800 registered voters nationwide reported that 15% of respondents have owned cryptocurrencies or NFTs. This percentage aligns with the findings of other recent surveys. So you see, white, black, and Hispanic voters. This is what they hold. So if they, they're, most of them are holding crypto, but look at how many don't hold it. That's, the, that's probably the most important aspect of this poll because that shows you how early you are. Eventually, everybody's going to be using crypto and not even knowing it. They're going to be using blockchain technology without even knowing it. They're going to be buying stuff at the store and the store is going to be running on blockchain technology. And then you see, don't know what those are. And I think that percentage is too low, honestly, because I know there's a lot of people out there that still don't even realize that crypto exists. There's people out there that go through their daily life, their daily routine. They get up, they go to work, they come home. They sit in front of the mainstream media news. They watch all the election news or whatever is going on around the world. They have a couple of beers and then they repeat the same thing the next day. Not having any idea what's really going on. You know, a new financial system is coming. And anybody that gets on board now can get financial freedom. Anybody that doesn't jump on this opportunity is going to end up on UBI because their jobs are going to get replaced by AI over time. And everybody's warning of that as well. Cryptocurrency hacks surge in August, exceeding $313 million in losses. And most of the losses were in Bitcoin. $238 million. You know, whenever they put out these articles, though, and they name Bitcoin, I think it's because they're trying to keep people out of crypto. Most of the people that know what crypto is, they only know Bitcoin. Most people outside of crypto, they never heard of XRP. Most haven't even heard of Ethereum. But they might know what Bitcoin is. And I think a lot of these articles target that demographic. They want to make sure no new investors are getting into crypto. They want to make it look like crypto is bad. If you get into crypto, you're going to lose all your money. It's, it's like going to the casino. At any moment, your, per, your portfolio can go to zero. It's only used for illicit activity and terrorism. But we all know better because we're crypto investors. We all know what they're trying to do. They're trying to shake us out, especially these ISO cryptocurrencies. Honestly, you look at any one of them and they're all so undervalued right now. It looks like there's something wrong with them. You know, even in the crypto space, other retail inv investors pointed out, they're like, Oh, yeah, go and invest in XRP. The price never moves. But you could say the same thing about XLM, XDC, HBAR, ALGO, IOTA, QMT. And I think that's by design. Something is holding them down. Because there's no way the price of XRP is sitting at 54 and well, almost 55 cents now. I mean, it should be way priced higher than that. It solves real-world problems. It can, can, it can fix the current financial system. It's going to be a major player in the new financial system. Yet, it seems like we go sideways all the time. And it gets very frustrating. But, you know, that frustration is what shakes a lot of people out. And that's what I think this is all about. It's very suppressed right now. And that's why I know once XRP does finally take off, it is going to be absolutely epic. But until it happens, you got to stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. 
With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.